now it's time to crack open the bottom border pack. And the first thing we see is a bag for B, I call them BRs, they call them BBs, so I'm going to just say BRs so I didn't want to confuse you, but BR1 through BR5, BR6 through 9, and another bag for BR10 through 13, and then a scalloped border triangles bag. So I will set this aside as I do the rest of them. And I'm going to focus on bags one through five. Now, because this is the first bag of this pack, I'm going to go through my booklet and make sure that I have all of my adjusted triangles labeled in my book. And most of the triangles have been adjusted. So we've got one and two, three and four, and then there's five, six, and then these are out of order, but seven, eight, nine, and there's a note here about nine that I will get to when I get to that part, 10, and then 13, and sometimes they're out of order, but I don't see 11 and 12. So every one of these is adjusted for English paper piecing except for 11 and 12. So I will put a note in my book on each triangle section stating that they are EPP modified. So I will go through and do that and I put my numbers in Sharpie here so that they correspond with my bags just so that it doesn't confuse me. So I've got BR1 and I labeled this BR1. BR is bottom row, top row, left row, right row. That's how I, or left. Um, so this is my fabric for this block, even though I haven't sorted it yet. I just happen to have it set aside because I sorted my fabric packs. So I will go through here and label these. Okay, so I went through my book. I labeled all of the triangles except for 11 and 12 that were modified in the book. Now, when I went back to go to sort, I have, cause now I have to sort my first block, four blocks, one through five. This is the adjusted block for this one. But what confused me was that this says bottom border two, but this is the picture in the book and this is the picture of the block, but this is what's in the book. So upon further investigation, this bottom border two is really the left side one. So for now, as you're sorting your B1, your BR1 through BR5 blocks, you're gonna ignore this completely because this is not even in this pack at all. So this is really the left side first triangle and the bottom border two triangle is not modified. So it's in here. So you have, you still have everything you need to sort this block, but you're going to ignore this completely. So this not, this is left side number one. And I'm not going to even worry about it because as far as I know, it's also in the left side book. So this is not something I'm going to even look at. So I'm going to ignore this page and I'm going to cross this back out because it's really not modified. And I verified this through paper pieces and I verified this on the Facebook group. So this is modified. This is not modified and ignore this page in your book. All right. Moving forward with that, let's get into the pieces for this bag one through five. All right, so I have my booklet out because it's a modified block for the first one and I'm trying to open my Ziploc here. So I'm gonna dump out my bag and we have all of the pieces for one through five of the bottom border. And I'm going to be looking for the long pieces. 
to put on this. And so we've got a lot of these pieces with one angle and one straight side. So I'm going to sift through this and do that. So I'm going to start digging through my pieces and I'm looking for, I've got two triangles here. I've got a triangle that does not have any sides that are the same. So I've got th three sides that are different on this triangle and three sides that are different on this triangle. And this is quite large. So that shouldn't be that hard to find. This one's going to be a little bit different. And as I'm sorting these, I'm going to kind of put them into piles. This is, this is kind of close. That's not the one I was looking for. So I'll, this is the same type of shape, but it's not big enough. So I'm just going to test these as I go through here. And then there's pieces that are clearly not for this. Like that's for something else entirely. And this might be my big one. Nope, not big enough. So I'm just going to be sifting through here, looking for pieces that fit. And this is not correct. So I got these little tiny, tiny pieces. I try to set those aside so I can find them later. But the problem with the triangle bags is that it's just a bunch of different types of triangles. And as we've learned at this point, a bunch of different triangles are a pain sometimes. So this looks like it might be my bottom piece. Yep, there we go. So I got two pieces. And these are... Okay, so we've got two thicknesses going on here. So this piece was for this. It just was, it deceived me. So I got those two pieces there. This is a thinner piece. So I've got thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner going on with this. And then these little tiny triangles I'm going to set aside. Oh, there's a little skinny sucker. And, that, and this is different sizes, but that's not the right thing. So it's just a process of elimination. This is the right shape, but it's too big, too small, and all that kind of thing. And this looks like it's, uh, I keep bumping my tripod, I apologize. This is for this piece. And, yeah, so, um, like squares and things like that, I'm just going to set aside and this is a funky shape. There's usually not a ton of funky shapes, so they're really easy to set aside. But the process of elimination will give you the pieces. So I'm going to finish sifting through here to find the rest of my pieces. And there's another one. So I found all my pieces for my first block, and I'm going to label them. BR1, and I'm going to hold them down as I do that. I'm labeling them with a very fine point sharpie. And I'm going to label all these. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my book for coloration. And I have the big piece on the bottom starts the, with the focus fabric. So I'm going to start with the big piece on the bottom and move the piece of hair. And I'm just going to go every other one with my red dot for my focus fabric indication. Now, before I move my pieces, I am going to label them for direction. And this is not, this particular one's not terribly critical. I'm going to do it anyway, just because once you get them in the baggie, then you have all willy-nilly. So, in this situation, I'm going to put an arrow that faces this side. So that if I have any issues with my directional fabric, then I have an arrow indication. Okay, so now all my ones that are focus fabric. My background fabrics are not directional, so I don't need to worry about that. If yours are, then I would mark the background ones as well. Um, so I'm going to mark these just so that when I go to put on my pieces on my fabric, I don't have to relay them out and figure out which goes where. So then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to mark my arrows in here so that I know what I labeled and why. So that way I know that my pieces are labeled and which pieces are labeled that. 
So I'm going to put all this in a baggie and then move on to my second triangle. So again, my second block, even though it says that there's a second block in the book that's modified, the second block is not modified, so work from your Dear Jane book. The picture in the booklet is for the left side first block, and so you can ignore it completely. So I'm going to go through here and try to find my triangles for this block in here. So there's my first big one. And I have to pay attention to the skinny ones. Like I've got, I've got little skinny ones here, and then I've got all these different sizes. So you want to make sure that they match up right. So I will start getting going on that. Okay, so this is my version of BR2, and I say that because I found all these pieces that fit exactly until I got to the tip. And the tip in the book has these pieces in here and there is no pieces that are this small. The smallest triangle pieces are almost the right size but they're still too big and there's no piece that goes this way and there's nothing that comes close to that little sliver. So I found this cap and the picture on the leaflet, if you look really closely at that, the tip is a solid piece as far as I can tell. And I say that because it's a print, so I it, think it's a solid piece of point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this is correct, and I'm going to label this and have faith that this is the case. But I'm also going to make a note of this mentally and say if there's a point where I come ahead of it, and I have a problem with the point of a triangle, which I don't think I will, because I really went through all these teeny tiny pieces and there's just nothing that comes close to filling this. So I'm gonna call this correct, and if that's not the case, then I will fix it down the road in this video. But I'm gonna go ahead and label all of these BR2, and then I'm gonna come behind it and mark my focus fabric. So I've got my BR2s labeled. I'm going to look at my picture here, and I'm going to label my focus fabrics in Triforce type things, because I'm a Zelda fan, and they all look like little Triforces to me. So I'm going to mark the outside portions. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. The big one, one, two, three. These three and then this one because it differentiates itself from the two background pieces that are touching it. So those are my pieces and I'm also going to point my arrow towards the tip. So I will make an arrow on all my focus fabric pieces because I don't have my fabric sitting here and it's a lot easier to label them now rather than later. So that's how I'm going to do it. And the other reason you want to do the arrows is because even if you don't have a directional fabric, it will tell you which way your triangle is pointed because some of these have different sides that are really close. Like these triangles, this side is a little longer than this side. So you do want to make sure that you have them orientated, excuse me, oriented in the same way. So that way they're labeled. And so then I'm going to put them in a baggie and move on to my third block. Now I've opened my book to my third piece. And now I remember why I don't write in Sharpie normally in these books is because it bleeds through the back. So I'm going to take my weird pieces that are in here and I've got three weird pieces that are all in this block apparently. I've got this guy, and then this guy, and this guy. And then I will sift through the rest of these and get these laid out to the book. Okay, so these six triangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, are all the same size. 
and then you've got two of these, and two of these, and two of these. And the key to finding these is you want to look for the right angles. You've got right angles here, right angles here, and all of these are right angled triangles, which will help a lot when you're going to sift through these triangles because not all of them are right angles, are right triangles. So I'm going to go through these and write BR3 on each one, and then I'll be able to look at my book to see which ones are focus fabric. So these are all labeled for BR3, and I'm going to look at my picture, and the picture shows that this triangle's focus fabric, and then there's little triangles. These two triangles are going to be focus fabric, and then this square and this point, which has been altered. So I'm going to mark this and this, this, and then this and this, and these two as well. And those should be my focus fabric. So I've got the big triangle down here, and then these guys, and these guys, this, and that. My only question is this. And if I look at the book, they put this and so this was not focus fabric. This was background and this was there. So I'm going to leave I'm going to leave this as background cuz it'll just will look like one big piece then. So I'm going to leave that as background. And then I'm going to mark I'm going to mark a arrow towards my point. It's the easiest way to remember it. The one thing I did not do on my last triangle at the end before I bagged it up is put an arrow direction. So here I will put arrow direction. And then I'm, I will go back to my second block and put my arrow direction is this way. Arrow, I don't know if you can see this, direction. Okay, so I put an up arrow on my arrows for my pieces. So my arrow direction is that way. My arrow direction for this one is this way. And I've got all my focus fabrics marked. I'm going to bag this up and move on to my next block. So on to block number four. Um, this is the modified block from the book. And I'm going to start looking for my pieces. I've already got a large triangle here. So it's just a matter of filling in the blanks. Okay, so I have found all of my pieces for my fourth triangle, and I'm going to sit here and label them. These are all different size, sides on each one, so there's definitely going to have to be an arrow just for direction of which way to lay these when I'm done labeling them, and then I'm going to label them also for focus fabric. So I've got all my BR4 block pieces labeled. And this is going to be, um, these are going to be focus fabric with this. And then all of these that, in this case, are pointing up. So this way. These are going to be all, and then the tip is going to be background. And then after that, I'm going to label all of my focus fabric pieces with arrows indicating the direction of the piece just so I know. Now my background pieces I'm debating about putting arrows on them. I think I know what I'm gonna do. That's right. What I do in a lot of these situations and I just now remembered because it's been a while since I've done a triangle bag sort is I will number the pieces themselves. So in this case I'm going to number these. So one, two, three, four. Numbers don't matter as long as you transpose the right number to the right square. So it doesn't matter where you put numbers, it doesn't matter what number you start with, just so long as you assign the same number to the same piece. So the six, seven, and this way you know which one goes where. And the, the way I know what direction they go in for the background pieces is I will put them in the 
direction that I wrote them. So in this situation, you know, I know that doesn't go this way because I wrote it this way. So that has helped, that helps me too. 11, 12, 13. So 11, 12, 13. And this is, of course, the last thing I do because I'm moving them as I go. So um, 14, 15, 15. 16 and then you don't have to assemble them in order but this way you know that 15 gets surrounded by 14 and 16 and so on and so forth so this is 17 18 19 20 and 21 17 18 19 20 and 21 that way I know which pieces go where when it comes to assembly and I don't have to as be as concerned about whether or not this is pointing the right direction. So my arrow direction is this way. And I've numbered my pieces for this block. And we will move on to the fifth and final block of this bag. All right, so the fifth and final block of this bag sort is going to obviously have all the rest of the pieces. And there's a ton. So... You know, you can easily get the obvious ones out of the way, but I try to assemble them logically. So I will put these together as I can make any heads or tails of them. And then hopefully there won't be any issues along the way. All right, so I have two pieces left and three pieces needed, and it may be that I dropped one or something, but it wasn't in the bag and all that, so I went ahead and made a diamond out of an index card that I'm just going to slot in there. Um, if I can find my stiletto, I'm going to slot this in here. I traced, I traced one of these. The problem with making one on your own is as exact as you can be. It's never the same but you can work it in so it's all right and then let's put these here and this here and then I will have my fifth triangle laid out and then after that so now I'm going to take my sharpie and I'm going to label these BR5 all the way through so I got all my pieces labeled and I'm going to check for my focus fabric locations. So I've got these bottom pieces and then I got these four diamonds, three, four, these three diamonds, three, these two diamonds, and this triangle, all for focus fabric. I'm also going to label them with my arrows, and because of there's so many of these that are exactly the same, I'm going to number them as well. So I'm going to put my arrow location to the down, to the point, to be consistent, and number these as I go. Alright, so my arrow location is going down, and I'm going to number these one. Make sure you make make sure they correspond to their actual location. Three. And you can move them as you go. And again, it doesn't matter which one is which as long as the right piece matches with its space. And I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to bag these in my baggie and I will be done with my BR1 through BR5 triangle bag sort. One last thing. As I was pushing these out of the way, a miraculous appearance of, a, of another diamond that was connected to the other one just magically appeared. So I'm going to transpose everything I put on this white one to my normal one so that everything looks the same.